with my first meet. This is about seven weeks old at this point. We started it on June 3rd, 2020. Today is July 28th, 2020. So yeah, it's about seven weeks. I'm still watching little bubbles coming up. I'm still seeing a little bit of airlock activity. So we just want to give this a check, see how it's doing, see if it's time to rack. It probably is not, but we're going to take a look anyway. It does look a little hazy still, um, which means it's not totally cleared. Not surprising. Seven weeks, you know. Also, this was under the desk of fermentation, which is two, three rooms that away. So just transporting it here kind of swirls stuff up a little bit. Yeah, the lease is not real um, stable because this was bread yeast. That is one of the issues with using bread yeast. And you'll see like a wavering at the bottom. Um, but let's just see what this did. Did really well. It's a 1026. So let me just write that down real quick while it's fresh in my head. And what that is is a 1.026 gravity. I'm just going to pour a little bit off while I have it here. It's it's relatively clear. I know I always said it's hazy, but it's actually not that bad. Um, let me just do a quick calculation and see what our alcohol percentage is at so far. It's at 11.34, 11.3, which being that this is Fleischmann's yeast, this might be done, but we don't actually know yet. This is the first reading we've taken, so I'd like to let this sit for another week and see how it does which means I'm just going to take a little sniff and a taste. We're going to pour this right back in. Let's let's just do this now. I'm going to pour this right back in here. And we'll put the airlock back on, the bung back on. This could be done, or it could still have a little bit to go. Because it's bread yeast, it's hard to really say. So what I'd like to do is just put the airlock and everything back on, give it a couple more weeks, give it another check, and if it doesn't change, then we know it's done. And just like last time, the bung won't stay in, so that's what the rubber band's for. Just gives a little bit of tension to hold it in place. It does an okay job. All right. Now, I want to give this a little smell and a taste. On the nose, this does not smell like a seven-week-old mead. It's heady. It's rich. Yeah. It's got... A little bit of that orange smell coming through. I'm getting, I can smell raisin. I'm getting hint of the tea even. Yeah, the tea is there. The honey is really coming through. This has the smell of a really well-made mead. And the taste of one. For a young mead, this is mighty fine. Now, there's a common idea that, oh, young mead doesn't taste good and this and that. And, you know, people will say, oh, if you use nutrients or you use some of the additives, that it'll come out better. That may or may not be true. I'm not even going to get into that. It's not a debate that we're going to have. But the idea that it should taste bad when it's young is kind of not exactly accurate. Some meads will always taste a little bit weird when they're young. This should. This has not a lot of extra things for nutrient for the yeast. It's pretty much a basic mead, and it was intended that way. But at seven weeks, this is drinkable now. I could put this in a glass and drink it. Keep in mind, I like my mead a little chilled. This is at room temperature. I'm getting everything that's in there. And there's really not much unpleasurable about this at all. That's shocking, but at the same time, not really, because this is the same recipe that we did once before, and it worked great then, too. But it's not really done. I can see that it's either off-gassing or still going, and it's a 1026. So I'm going to put this back under the desk, let it sit for a couple weeks, take another reading. Okay, so it's been about two weeks. Now we're going to take a reading and see if it's ready to rack. As usual, hydrometer, graduated cylinder, poor man's wine thief. Now I want to be careful to not disturb the lease. This is a bread yeast fermentation, so it's got a lot of very volatile, wispy lease that is the downside with bees it's a technical term yeah that's the downside to using bread yeast yeah it'll all fit so when we left this last it was 1.026 let's see where it is now 1.026 on the nose Yay. beautiful that means we can rack this but 
I want to taste it too. You can tell by the size pour that I do how much I think we're going to like it. So something that comes up a lot is people talk about headroom when racking and they wonder, how do I take care of that? Well, we have an assortment of different size vessels. We have the regular one gallon small mouth fermenter. We have the one gallon wide mouth fermenter that's actually a little smaller. Yeah, gallon. It's a little smaller than this one. And then this is a three liter. This is actually a Carlo Rossi Sangria bottle, I think. And the airlocks and everything fit in them nicely, so we really like to use that just in case. This one, because you can see it's already down a little bit below the shoulders, and I know there's a significant amount of lease. I'm thinking three liters is good, plus if there's any extra, you know, <clears throat> we'll just drink it. But I'm going to put this up on Wibble, which is the white bucket of levitation. Hello. And the reason for that is when you're using a siphon, you want to make sure that your source is higher than your destination. Okay. It is a very important thing right now for me to not put this all the way to the bottom of this fermenter because I will disturb that lease and I do not want to. That's This is the downside to using bread yeast, okay? So I'm just going to put it about there and I'm going to try to get this started. Small stroke sometimes works a little bit better. I don't like to do it that way though. So here we go. I'm just going to hold that in there. We just had somebody, I just read their comment, where they said that they just racked this, which made me a little curious because we're just racking it now, which means they racked it before we did, but they made it after we did because our video came out before they would have made it from our recipe, right? We're just racking it now, which means they racked it before we did, but they made it after we did because our video came out before they would have made it from our recipe, right? So was this ready to rack a week ago? Maybe, I don't know, but it doesn't hurt to let it sit a little longer. But their problem was they got all the little bits up in their siphon. They probably took that siphon and shoved it all the way to the bottom, thinking that that cap was going to protect them. Well, sometimes you got to use a little bit of, you know, you got to look at what's going on and judge it for yourself. I mean, obviously, if I just jam this all the way to the bottom, it's going to suck up everything down there. Not a good thing. You got to use some finesse. Now, being that this is the first rack, you can rack this again if you get too much of the sediment in there, and that's not a problem. You just lose a little bit more product every time you rack. I do see. A distinct line of wispy in there that's just never going to settle out. I'm hoping to not suck up too much of it, but we're racking it, so it, it'll settle out again anyway. It's, it's perfectly fine. But I do want to get as much as possible because this is good stuff. Don't be fooled into thinking that just because this is a very simple mead, that it doesn't taste good. If you watch any of our videos, you know that simple sometimes is the best ones. Okay, I went as far down as I possibly could. We're down to that, but it's pretty much lease at that point. And wow, glad I didn't let it go too much further because we weren't watching and it filled it all the way to the neck here. Okay, so we weren't really paying attention, but it coincidentally filled to there and I had a little bit left over. So we just get a bigger sample today, that's all. But uh, I'm gonna stick an airlock in this. These bottles don't hold airlocks super well. You know so I'm gonna stick the rubber band in there just in case, because we don't want this to fall out. And you do definitely want an airlock on for conditioning or what some people call secondary phase. What happens during this phase? It's going to sit for a while. It's going to clear out even more, even though that's, that's pretty good. It's nice and clear. This is only uh, since June 3rd. So that's why uh, this is about nine weeks old right now. Not even all that old. Nice and clear at this point, And it has a lovely fruity smell. Everything about this is really, really nice so far. So what will happen to this now? This is going to go into what I call conditioning or secondary phase, where it's going to clear out a little bit more, more sediment's going to fall to the bottom, any little bits that might have gotten up in there, they're going to fall out, and it's going to begin to mellow and age. And it's just going to get better with time. How long? Don't really know, but I'll probably let this sit until it's clear, then bottle it. But for now, let's take a taste, shall we? On the smell, it's honey tiny bit of citrus, just like expected, because, you know, we put a little bit of citrus in there. Go ahead and get, have a taste. It has a little bit of that Ooh. youth to it because it has some of the alcohol forward notes, which normally after aging blends and mellows through yeah. better. When I breathe um, out, I get that little bit. But this is not bad. Oh no, this is good. This, yeah. This is very nice. <laughs> If you've ever had most commercial meats that you can buy in the store, this is better. 
plain and simple, this is better than most of the stuff you can buy in the stores. Um, it with age will be even better. And I mean age like another couple of months. It doesn't need years yeah. like some people think. A couple of months, this is actually going to be really, really nice. We'll probably bottle it in a month or two and then let it age some more in the bottle. And we might do like a one year tasting of this or something. Okay, so we started this a while ago, like uh, almost three months ago. Okay. And it's been wrecked. It's been sitting for a while. We tasted it and it was good. So today we're going to put it in bottles and let it age some more. Now you might even say, how come you're not taking a reading? Because we don't need to. We tested this, oh, a month ago and it was 1.026. We tested it a couple weeks later. It was 1.026. That's perfectly fine. We racked it at that point. So we know that this is all good. There was absolutely no activity in the airlock of any kind. There was no indications to make me think that this was anything but a perfectly stilled and stable brew. As always, when we go to bottle, we use an auto siphon. We put the wand on the end. Now, somebody actually sent us a bottling wand, a really nice one, a metal one, and it was beautiful. Here's the problem. It was too big. It doesn't fit the tubing that we use for this auto siphon. It might fit when we do the big five gallon ones, but it doesn't actually fit this one. It was PC Gamer M. I remember the name because I've seen him comment before. So thank you for sending that. <laughs> the problem is we can't actually use it most times. And I just want to put this on uh, about a half an inch. That way I can get it back off later. And as always, what we want to do is drop one of these down into the bottle. Derek is going to hold the bottle steady while I get the auto siphon up and into this. I'm pushing the bottling wand down so that the spring is uh, activated. Right. And this is one of our three liter Carlo Rossi no, 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 no. Okay. Got to be really careful because it's very full. Like I said, this is one of our three liter Carlo Rossi bottles. They don't really allow a lot of manipulation inside there. But there's not a lot of lease, so I'm going to uh, put this all the way to the bottom. We are using those newer bottles that we got though that are just screw caps. A lot of people have been asking about screw caps lately. Like for some reason they have the idea that they're not safe to use for bottling. I cannot agree with that statement. <laughs> they're perfectly fine. There's no issue at all. In case you're wondering, the reason why it's in this bottle is because we like to keep as little headspace as possible. This is one of our succession bottles, if you will. We have one gallon, wide mouth one gallon, three liter. So if we end up getting four bottles out of this, that means one gallon is 3.785 liters, which is, you know, call it a little bit over a wine bottle uh, over what we have here, right? So that means we gained about three liters out of that. Well, when you leave headspace and things like that, that's really not that bad. We didn't have a lot of loss for this. Maybe half of one bottle. That's not bad. That's the way you have to look at this. There is a cost to making this. Call it the angel's share, if you will, like they do for, for whiskey. <laughs> But if you do a price comparison versus the ingredients and the joy you get from doing this hobby versus buying a finished product that has all these additives in it, it's way cheaper to do it this way, regardless of the little bit that you lose in the process. Right. Well, we do it because it's cheaper, but we also do it because, well, this is way better than any mead we could buy in the store. <laughs> but just a cost comparison real quick. This one has... Some raisins, Fleischmann's yeast, uh, black tea, orange peel. It does not say what kind of honey, but I'm guessing probably the wildflower. So I know that stuff is about $60 for 12 pounds, right? So that's $5 a pound. We used three pounds to make this, so that's 15 bucks. Let's say I used, <laughs> between the raisins and the yeast, call it a dollar, okay? The tea, let's say another dollar. I mean, that's getting really crazy. Yeah. Um, so let's even say another dollar with the orange peel. So we $18 for four bottles of mead. That's about four, $4.50 a bottle of mead. I cannot buy mead for anything less than $20 to $30 a bottle where we live. And that's for not as good as this. I mean, it just won't be as good as this. It's like Chaucer's, which is like your standard. But even that's like 30 bucks a bottle around here. So mm, this is still way cheaper. The whole gallon costs less than one bottle. 
And this is actual mead versus well, Chaucer's honey is actual mead. flavored wine. Chaucer's is actual mead. It's just not very good. It was the Bunratty that was... Yeah, Bunratty is the fake one. If you don't know what we're talking about, go watch the Bunratty tasting video. I have never had so many rants in a video before. <laughs> it deserved it. Now, something I'd like to point out. This is Fleischmann's yeast. We always talk about flocculation and how it doesn't. I'm not getting a lot of wispies in here. There's a little bit, but it's not bad at all. This actually flocculated out really nice. You can see by the clarity. Hold one of those bottles up to show them. Look how clear that is. Anybody that ever tells you you can't use bread yeast to make mead, they're wrong. Wrong, wrongity wrong. <laughs> so, we got a little bit of waste at the bottom here. In this case, because it's so clear, I may actually pour that out into another container and um, decant that out at a later date. This stuff is so good, I don't want to waste any. But that's pretty close to a fourth bottle. With that little bit, it will be four bottles. All right, so I got out my phone to show you the clarity in this. You know, everybody does the backlight thing. I just wanted you to see it. It doesn't show this super, super well, but this mead, I mean, I can see through it, okay? It's that kind of clear. And something else of note, this was, like I say, Fleischmann's bread yeast. This is something that people pick on others all the time, and we get slammed for this constantly, that because we say that bread yeast is okay to ferment with. Well, this went to 11.3%. It tastes good. What's the problem? Anyway, what's going to happen to these now? You're going to see it tasting in a couple of weeks because we're going to use this bottle up. I'll probably put it in the fridge and we'll drink this. We're going to put one of these away for a whole year and you'll get to see that in a year, how much better it gets. And the other two, I'm going to drink. If you like this video, we have over 200 videos on how to make wine, cider, mead, and beer on our channel. Thank you for liking and subscribing. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.